Hey guys, so I'm here with some more Watercolor Wednesday stuff. Um, I've been asked before a couple of times actually about what kind of pens I would recommend using over watercolor and for that matter under watercolor. So as far as underneath the watercolor, if you've watched a lot of my uh, Watercolor Wednesday videos or my watercolor journal videos, then you know um, I use a variety of pens. You just want to make sure it's waterproof when it's dry before you, you know, watercolor over it for obvious reasons. Um, and you can use just about anything. I prefer something with a really fine nib. So that being said, let me get my little bucket out here. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a bad allergy day, <coughs> an asthma day. Um, I have the Scarlet Lime Pen, the Pilot Multiball Pen, and it comes in one more version that's in my bucket somewhere. Here it is. Um, the Pilot Permaball Pen. Now the Pilot Permaball and the Scarlet Lime are basically the same pen with the same size nib. It's a fairly big nib. It's not real small. I prefer when I'm drawing with under or over watercolor the Pilot Multiball because although it seems to be the same pen with the same ink, it has a finer nib in it than these do. You could use any of them though. Just make sure the ink is dry before you get started. And I'm going to show you some examples. I also have this carbon uh, pen which has a, a permanent black ink in it. I got this on Amazon and it is just called a carbon pen. And it has ink cartridge inside that you re that you take out and refill when it gets empty, and it has a, you know, old-fashioned fine pointed nib in it. And of course, the other one that you could do use you could use like a fine point sharpie. I have some of those. They tend to be a little finicky when um, you're writing over or uh, over any kind of paint. Really, um, I have one of those, but of course, when it's dry, it's permanent, so that would work. And Faber-Castell pit pens also would work. I like to get these four pen sets because they have a variety of nib sizes in, in them, including from like the super fine all the way to a brush tip. And I have usually around me, especially where I'm watercoloring, I have a black set and a sepia set, which is dark brown. Um, those are some of my favorites. I have lots of other pens up here, but they aren't all otherwise necessarily waterproof. So the only thing I can say is that you should try the ones you have, let them dry, and then try going over them with just plain water and see what's one, which ones smear and which ones don't. So I have these practice cards that I've done from um, some live view streams when I've Skyped with different people to give them some help and some tutorials. And these are just practice cards um, with different things on them. This is from the last Watercolor Wednesday where we did color mixing. Um, so let's try the different pens over some of these cards and you guys can really see which ones work the best and which ones don't, which ones give a super fine line and which ones don't. All right, so let me zoom in just a little bit so you can get a little closer view of the paper. There we go. And let's start with the Sharpie. See, this is what I mean. The Sharpies can be a little bit finicky. Let's see, that one's not... It's okay, but that definitely would not be my first choice. Alright, Pilot Multiball. See, that just writes really nice. It's a really nice pen to use with watercolor. It works really well, gives you a nice line. And you know, you definitely can when you're watercoloring, you know, put your design on with your paint, let it dry completely, and then pull in some sketchy lines to just define things and make things stand out. See, the only problem with my carbon ink pen is I always want to do this with the lid, and it just, you know, there's no point in doing that. I don't know. <laughs> so this one sometimes gets a little bit um, 
like dried up at the end. So there we go. All right. So, you know, when you're watercoloring, you can use one of these pens, you know, like here in this grass, if this was part of the landscape, I wouldn't have to go over all the grass with the black pen, but I certainly could go over some of the strands of grass just to give it some more depth and interest and make my painting stand out more and make it more defined. Here's another practice card, and again, we're still with the carbon ink pen. And this is one of my favorites for watercolor, under and over. I like working with this pen. I heard about this pen from Jane Davenport. She uses this pen. And it, you know, using a pen with your watercolor just it gives it a different look. The only problem with this one is sometimes you have to, like right there, it didn't want to write, so I just went like this off camera, dried it off a little bit. I think you get a little bit of uh, flex of paint stuck in the nib of the pen, even with the watercolor. See right there. So you just have to be mindful of that. There we go. So I like that one. And then of course we have the pit pens. And these are actually new. Um, I got a second set of each because my other ones are in my travel bag and I didn't want to have to keep and digging them out of my travel bag. So I'm going to pull out the um, S, which is, I think, super fine. I don't know. But it says S on the end. Whoops, where am I? There we are. So I'm going to pull it out in the black and the brown. And it has a really tiny nib. So this is the, the sepia. And anybody who out there who has pit pens know they write on just about anything. So just make sure your paint is really dry. But see, that's the sepia. And that, you know, especially with this sort of dusty purple color, which is one of my favorite purples. I like the sepia because it gives you some definition without like being like smack, smacking you in the face with it. Here is the same pen in black. And I'll, I'll use this paint swatch down here because it's a similar color. And the sepia sometimes is nice because it's just more subtle. So there you go. And I, so I like my pit pens for working with my watercolor. They work really nice. And these four pen sets come, that's the S. Then you get an F. I'm, I'm assuming this is like super fine. This is, fi the F is fine, I think. So this is the F. This is the S. And then you get an M. And then you also get a brush tip. In the same set. And I think it's an affordable way to just get a few of these pens in different sizes to work with something like this and then keep them in your kit of the watercolor paints. And you probably don't need more than the black and sepia. Um, and if you're on a budget just get and you just need to get one. I don't know. I would probably get the sepia, but I think the, the rest of you should probably get black. <laughs> I don't know. So there you have it. I hope that gave you guys some helpful hints and tips on what you can do with your black pens, which ones will write over your watercolor paints. 
And, you know, it's fun to have this sort of, you know, lotusy flower design on a painting and, you know, just lay the color down and let it dry completely and then come back to it and outline it and do some doodling in the black pen. We are mixed media artists after all, and adding another medium to your paintings is what mixed media is all about, so don't be afraid to do this. You also can, um, another trick... I almost was going to sign off there, but I thought of one more thing. Okay, so another thing that you can do, there we go. Okay, so sometimes when you do a painting like this, say, and with your watercolor, and you meant to leave more white space than you did, you didn't mask anything off with masking fluid to leave white space, and you didn't leave enough of the paper dry so the paint wouldn't go there, but you want to go in and you want to add a highlight. You could do it with white gouache paint, which is a opaque watercolor paint or you could do it with gel pen so this is a uniball signo broad this is the broad so it's the wider one and again it's gonna write over the watercolor paint it's not gonna write great it's gonna be kind of sketchy but when you're talking about just adding a highlight to something that might be what you want and while it's wet you can smudge it just a little bit um, and then that's the broad, and then this is the finer point, which is the Signo Angelic. Which actually, in my opinion, I think writes a little better over the watercolor than the broad point. And you could use that to add highlights also. Without having to get into buying paint pens. I mean, of course, if you have Sharpies or Posca pens, um, you could do some of it with that. You're going to still, again, want the super fine tips, I think, instead of the broad point. But it, that gives you some ideas of what you can and can't do over watercolor. Um, the nice thing about using these black pens um, is that they're really kind of like ink. So you could do the sketch and then you could walk watercolor over it. They're not necessarily going to resist the watercolor paint it will show through because the watercolor is translucent but if you use a paint pen or even I think probably the gel pens it's going to act as a resist so you know but it that's not necessarily a bad thing you just need to practice and play and see what you have and experiment with what you have in your stash before you go out and buy a whole bunch of new stuff alright don't forget to have a great day have a great week and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it and I'll see you later